My name is Mark McCandlish, and for the last 21 years, I have worked as a conceptual artist for a variety of defense contractors. Uh, I've been involved uh, in conceptual artwork or the production thereof for uh, Rockwell on the X-30 program and also on the uh, the High Step program, that's spelled H-Y-S-T-P, means Hypersonic Test Bed Program. Uh, during the course of my career, I've twice had a secret security clearance. In 1967, while my father was stationed at Westover Air Force Base, the uh, headquarters for 8th Air Force Strategic Air Command, I witnessed and watched through a telescope a UFO which hovered over a nuclear weapons storage facility for approximately 10 minutes and then departed uh, with an acceleration approaching a bullet leaving a rifle barrel. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in, uh, Look at that. in 1988, in November, a college buddy of mine, an associate by the name of Brad Sorensen, uh, informed me that he had personally witnessed three flying saucers at a very large hangar at Norton Air Force Base during the course of an air show that was held on Saturday, November 12, 1988. Uh, I subsequently uh, called my congressman from that district. Um, I called his office. This was Congressman George E. Brown, Jr., who at the time was the chairman of the uh, Congressional Committee on Space Science and Advanced Technology. I naturally assumed that since this presentation that Brad talked about was for top military brass and certain congressional uh, individuals, that uh, his office must have coordinated this. Uh, with the local Air Force Office of Public Affairs. Uh, a male staff member in Congressman Brown's office not only confirmed the exhibit, but the fact that there were three discs at that exhibit. These discs were hovering off the floor without any visible means of support. They were referred to as alien reproduction vehicles, also nicknamed the flux liner because they used high voltage electricity. Um, let's see. To keep things short, uh, this this is a diagram that I uh, made based on a uh, a sketch that Brad Sorensen did for me in rough form uh, so, uh, shortly after he uh, had his uh, sighting, and uh, subsequently cleaned that drawing up and made it much more accurate. And that's the uh, the drawing that Dr. Greer is holding there now. Uh, later on, I obtained uh, photographs. They were uh, taken in 1967 by a military pilot, Harvey Williams, flying a C-47 for the Air Force at 12,000 feet, approximately 25 miles southwest of Provo, Utah. Uh, this particular vehicle matches the so-called ARV uh, in all proportions and respects in terms of the detail of the shape of the craft. And this was photographed, as I say, in Ju June or July of, uh, um, June of 1967. I um, um, uh, later um, spoke to a, a gentleman by the name of Kent Sellen that I met at an air show at Edwards Air Force Base in 1992, the first unveiling publicly of the B-2 bomber. Uh, he indicated to me that in 1973, when he was a crew chief uh, working on um, experimental aircraft at Edwards Air Force Base, that he had... Um, uh, unintentionally wandered into an area where there was a classified aircraft, namely the ARV. Uh, he described it in detail and he added uh, other details to the account uh, concerning the configuration and the operations vehicle that uh, Brad Sorensen was not aware of. Uh, subsequently, Brad Sorensen met with the famous aeronautical designer Bert Rattan, gave him a copy of this blueprint which you've just been shown. Mr. Rattan felt that it was a joke and put it on his wall as kind of a joke. And um, a third party confirmed for me later um, that a Colonel Ray Walsh from Edwards Air Force Base was visiting Mr. Rattan, saw this, uh, this blueprint on the wall and registered quite a degree of shock and anger, wanted to know where the hell he got this blueprint because there was, in fact, such a craft at that time, approximately 1994, 95, uh, in a hangar at Edwards Air Force Base, North Base Complex at that time. Um, subsequently, I've uh, done a lot of research on this product, this this, this vehicle. I've uh, come across a number of declassified documents that show that the Air Force, as early as 1960, was wind tunnel testing flying saucer shapes up to Mach 20. 
And uh, I also have declassified uh, NASA documents that show similar shapes. Uh, in fact, this is this is the document here that uh, more or less um, details the, uh, the wind tunnel testing up to Mach 20. This is the NASA doc uh, document right here that was declassified, and it shows a variety of uh, spherical and lenticular shapes that were flight tested up to, or I should say, uh, wind tunnel tested up to Mach 6. Um, I subsequently uh, obtained a copy of an inner office memo from Hercules Aerospace that described the particular type of science involving something called zero-point energy and uh, um, uh, scalar waves. Um, according to Brad Sorensen, this is the basis of the technology for these anti-gravity propulsion systems. This particular document here describes six different meetings involving uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency and cooperative efforts with the, the Russian uh, scientific community in investigating this uh, what is called the fundamental enabling technology that was originally discovered apparently by Nikola Tesla in the early 1900s. Anyway, uh, I could provide you much more detail in, um, at a later time, and I am prepared to uh, testify in detail concerning these events and their truthfulness before Congress. Thank you very much.